Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a geomagnetic storm update Wednesday, December 9th, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. Now, those of you that watch the channel know that the sun launched an explosion of electromagnetic energy towards the Earth in the form of a coronal mass ejection. And geomagnetic storm watches have been issued. What does that mean for you and I? We're going to break it down downtown. Three days ago, a C 7.4 solar flare with a duration of about an hour kicked off the sun. Not the largest solar flare for this solar cycle, but the largest earth facing solar flare in years. And that is what we are now waiting for to hit earth which it's already hitting, by the way. So here's a little sneak preview. We've just entered geomagnetic instability about an hour ago, and that's going to increase. We're going to break it down for you, so follow us along. Northern lights are possible in parts of the contiguous U.S. as well as the entire northern and southern hemisphere to very low latitudes. Here they're showing Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus in, in the northern portions, possible. Possible aurora in Texas. Can you believe it? But it says here it could be seen as far south as Pennsylvania. Well, not according to your map. Boom! So basically, when a solar flare faces Earth, if it produces a coronal mass ejection, which ejects something into space, it starts coming towards us. And it does slam Earth, and most of that energy enters through the poles. We'll get to that. But first, we're going to look at the Enlil spiral. And this basically breaks down the plasma density and radial velocity of set, said such events. Now, what you want to look at here is the sun is the central feature here. And Earth is this little dot over here to the right. The first thing that's going to strike us is this extremely dense coronal hole stream. This is pouring out of one of those dark regions in the sun. And in fact, after the dark region turns around, then the stream of plasma hits us. So that is what is hitting us currently, that first stream. And we'll get to that in more detail. Now, after that first stream hits us, here, which is now, within a few hours, the C7.4 solar flares coronal mass ejection, it's a double whammy. It hits us, boom, right there, just hours later. Now, the first event, the coronal hole, is going to bring instability into our systems and charge the ground and other wires and instruments on Earth. And if the second event pushes us even higher, we could see some perturbations, but we will get to that. Now, this is a rapid upstart of Solar Cycle 25. You can see the turn up here, pretty rapid, but still not as spectacular as any of the other recent four solar cycles. So. Don't get your thoughts on this being a, a major cycle. We have ups and downs as this moves forward and progresses. But this is a major uptick. And you can see, according to the Discover Solar Wind telemetry here, that about four hours ago, the plasma speed spiked. It went from 300 and, it went from 400 kilometers per second up to 570 instantaneously. And this was caused by this bump in density at the same time coming from that coronal hole stream. You can see it picking up here in the BZ, not so much in the phi angle. But we should see another bump up in density and some larger increases in, in speed. If not, if this is the coronal hole and we're at 550, we'll probably only get pushed to 6, 750, 800 kilometers per second, which is still quite significant and could bring us up into KP6 and 7. So right now we're sitting at geomagnetic instability. We're not in geostorm yet. It is my prediction that the next bump up, the next three-hour window here, will be up in geostorm. And here is the three-day geomagnetic forecast coming directly from NOAA. Now, the geomagnetic forecast below or what you're looking at is provided by NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center, the SWPC, and is based on the latest available data and modeling. Now, when it comes to space weather, current geomagnetic conditions can rapidly change without notice. So 
this is not necessarily the scenario. But what they have is right now in the 18 to 24 hour of December 9th, which is right now, us pumping up into storm. KP5, we've already reached KP4, so the next step should be KP5. By the morning six hours, we could get up as high as KP8, according to the forecast, for six hours. Drop back down to KP5, geomagnetic instability for 12 hours, and then back up to KP6 or higher into storm on the 11th, dropping back down. So this is the pulsing of all the events, and that is the official forecast which may or may not come true in this fashion. And, and we will go over it and we will do an analysis of the forecast versus the actual effect in the days to come. Now, what we should be looking for is increased aurora far down into the mid to lower latitudes. And here we see it re-uploading. So you can see that you, there is still quite a nice chance of aurora up in Canada. But by tomorrow, this aurora chance may come all the way down here to 45, 40 degrees latitude. So excellent opportunity to see auroras in places you've never, ever seen them. Now, what's the problem? What is the problem? A lot of people don't know. Solar flares and coronal mass ejections pose no direct threat to humans, meaning they, they won't strike you. But the way that this is written, it's quite unfortunate because they do pose a direct threat to humans that like to live in the modern world. Now, Earth's atmosphere protects us from the radiation of space weather, but our magnetosphere is waning. So that protection is getting weaker and weaker. And when a CME hits Earth's magnetosphere, the volume of space around our planet influenced by our magnetic field, if it's directed southward, will strongly interact with Earth's northward-oriented magnetic field. And when this happens, Earth's magnetic field is peeled open like an onion, allowing energetic solar wind particles to stream down the field lines to hit the atmosphere over the poles. Now, at Earth's surface, the magnetic storm is seen as a rapid drop in Earth's magnetic field strength, and this decrease lasts 6 to 12 hours, after which the magnetic field gradually recovers over a period of several days. But this is a one-two punch, the coronal whole stream followed by the CME, so we could literally be in storm for two to three days. Now, the geomagnetic storm that results from a CME, magnetosphere interactions can muck up all kinds of technology that we rely upon here in modern life. Satellites that orbit high up in geosynchronous orbits may become charged. Many of these are communication satellites, and they are vulnerable to these storms, either because they could be penetrated by high-energy particles or because the satellite could become highly charged itself, causing key components to be damaged by discharging currents. Even more serious is the potential for CMEs to damage electrical grids. Now, a geomagnetic storm produces electrical currents in conductive material on the ground including through pipelines, communication cables, and power lines. These large geomagnetically induced currents can overload transformers and lead to widespread, widespread blackouts, explosions of said transformers, and fires on the surface. Now imagine large cities without power for a week, a month, a year. Can you imagine that? Well... None of this is purely hypothetical. The 1859 solar storm dubbed the Carrington event, the strongest on record, sets auroras flaring as far south as Cuba and rendered telegraph lines across North America inoperable. The 2003 coronal mass ejection disrupted satellites, high-frequency radio communications, and blacked out the Swedish city of Malmo. But as our magnetosphere wanes, these events will pale in comparison to what is coming. And if you live in North America and you're in one of these circled black regions, you may be bumming. What you're looking at is a scenario showing the effects of 4,800 nanoteslas per minute geomagnetic field disturbance at 50 degree geomagnetic latitude scenarios. And it does not look get good. The regions outlined are susceptible to system collapse due to the effects of the GIC, which is the ground induced current disturbance. The impacts would be of unprecedented scale and involve populations in excess of 130 million going dark for an extended period of time.
zombie apocalypse much. What other hazards of magnetic storms exist? Well, ionospheric expansion can increase satellite drag and make their orbits difficult to control. During magnetic storms, satellite electronics can be damaged through the buildup of discharge of static electric, electric charges and more. There are human health risks. So let's real quick come over and show you some of the telemetry that shows you about satellite charging. And if you go over to spaceweathernews.com, you're going to fall upon some of these charts. Here we see the sea cert spacecraft charging hazards, and you can see a portion of the planet here in Western Africa currently surface charging. You can also see here in these weird graphs of green, tan, and orange, different latitudes and the satellite charging dangers. And if you just want to look at it all in general here, these are the orbital displays of the low Earth orbit satellites and the current charging happening. Here in orange, these satellites in this region are currently being charged. If this was all in orange, we would have satellites re-entering the Earth. Now, how solar flares disrupt technology on Earth, let's walk it through again. Number one, hot gas full of charged particles is hurled from the sun through a coronal mass ejection. Not all solar flares create CMEs. So not all solar flares necessarily affect Earth if they're Earth facing. So let's just get that out of the water. Number two, the solar flares fires through space at 200,000 miles per second. If there is a coronal mass ejection, that is what will be occurring. These particles batter Earth's magnetic field and potentially strip it away like an onion. You can see the layers there. And changes to the field cause power jumps and failures in the grid, which could send us back to the Stone Age. So the solar flare protons, they can hit GPS signal scintillation stations, causing disruptions. They can cause radiation effects on avionics and planes, especially at high latitudes. They can damage spacecraft electronics through energetic electrons. Now, these scintillations and charges come down to the surface, and geomagnetically induced currents and power systems can overload and explode the grid. Not only that, induced effects in submarine cables can light up buildings and heat those cables. What does that mean? Telluric currents and pipelines can do the same thing, blowing up floating substations or the stations back on Earth. So, the sun is capable of a lot. And that's not all. There are many human health considerations. Here you're looking at the geomagnetic score and the cosmic ray alerts to geomagnetic storm alerts. Cosmic rays happen at zero, geomagnetic storm alerts, six and above. Now the geomagnetic storm risks and solar flare risks are more abundant than the cosmic ray risks. And we are now talking about geomagnetic storm risks. So let's break them down. What we should be looking for if we're up in KP7 or higher, heart rate fluctuations, heart attacks, strokes of all kinds, acute coronary syndrome, blood pressure increase, seizures, migraine risk, anxiety, stress, emotional instability, cognitive diminution, suicide risk, mental disorder flare up, radiation risk at high latitudes from cosmic radiation. Now there's also an alert for diabetic patients and those with metabolic disorders for airline passengers in high latitudes. So solar flare risks can include flare ups and migraines, the digestive disorders, skin conditions, including those related to STDs, visual impairment, reaction time, diminution, emotional instability, radiation risk. So there is a lot going on. And if you want some of the scientific facts, this is an excellent blog I'll supply you below by Carolina Litica Zia Vieira. And this is quite recent. Geomagnetic disturbances and cardiovascular mortality risk and how we've come to those conclusions. The fact that short-term geomagnetic disturbances driven by solar activity have been linked to a broad range of adverse health effects. In this blog, she will break it down for you. So we're not out of the woods yet, folks. We have only entered the beginning of the event. We are now in geomagnetic instability, headed to geomagnetic storm, potentially KP8 or 9. 
in which case lots of these health risks will come to fruition. So it's our warning to stay calm, keep calm. It is boom time, literally. Be relaxed, do some yoga, deep breathing. Stay out of harm's way if you are someone that ha is a risk, high level risk to these potential side effects. We love each and every one of you and we want you all to be safe. This may become ever increasingly more difficult as our magnetosphere wanes and we enter solar cycle 25 and we head towards solar max sometime in 2025. Hope you got something out of the video. We will report on some of the effects of the geomagnetic storm as they unfold tomorrow. In the meantime, we wish you all a happy and healthy geomagnetic storm. Be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and share this with people you care about. We love you. And that is a boom to knowledge.